J.J. Abrams' 2009 film Star Trek was a huge success. And of course, plans were made for a sequel. It took four years to come together, but when it arrived in 2013, man, was it ever something. Bullshit. The gang was back together, now ensconced in their roles aboard the flagship of Starfleet, the USS Enterprise. Kirk and Spock were now bickering buds, and before you're halfway down the popcorn bucket, Kirk's already been relieved as captain of the Enterprise. But before the realization hits you that the actual popcorn has ended and you're just chewing unpopped kernels, Kirk gets the ship back. Before release, Star Trek Into Darkness teased the true identity of Benedict Cumberbatch's character. Fans assumed he was playing Khan. JJ and company maintained it was a guy called John Harrison. To cut a long story short, it is Khan. A very pale Khan. Which didn't go down very well in 2013. The filmmakers really thought that hiding the fact that Khan was in the movie would prevent people from thinking this was just a lousy remake. It's not a remake of Wrath of Khan. It's so much less than that. It's like when a chocolate bar wants to raise the price of its product, but does it in a way so that the price of the bar stays the same, but you end up with less chocolate overall. For those out of the loop, Khan Noonien Singh was a genetically engineered despot who, along with a few dozen followers, was put into suspended animation as a punishment, but revived in the 23rd century, here by the rogue Admiral Marcus. He wanted to use Khan and his followers against the Klingon, since they have a killer instinct missing from the 23rd century pussies like Kirk and Spock. His words. Marcus holds Khan's people hostage so that we have a psychopath working for a sociopath. Or is it the other way around? Peter Weller is suitably angry as a hawkish Starfleet Admiral who's responsible for letting Khan loose, while Alice Eve plays his daughter, Carol Marcus, who we met in the original Wrath of Khan as one of Kirk's exes with whom he had a child. Alice Eve is great and more or less introduced as part of the crew, but for whatever reason doesn't appear in the next film. She's also the source of the other thing that people hated, a gratuitous scene with Kirk perving on her. The film also revives a Trek tradition in keeping the ship's doctor out of the action as much as possible. McCoy pops up now and then for a scene, but is strangely out of the action apart from the odd scene where he's needed. He's in the films less than the original McCoy, but at the very least, he has more to do than Beverly Crusher ever did in the Next Generation movies, which means he has more than three lines in the film. Uhura's role has also settled down from being a proactive character in the first film to somebody whose main role is to now glare at Spock for being a dick. Sulu and Chekhov also don't do all that much in this film. Scotty has an attack of conscience and takes a leave of absence, but still manages to find and board a hidden high security vessel with very little trouble at all. Into Darkness seems less of an ensemble movie than the first picture and is more of a Kirk Spock romance. And Khan. No, not that one. This one. My name is Khan. Well, Cumberbatch is always good, but that doesn't change the fact that he makes a lousy Khan. Khan is my name. It was always going to be hard to top Ricardo Montalban in terms of casting, but the sensible thing to do would have been to, I don't know, try. We also get our only look at the Klingons in this trilogy of films. So their look in this universe is basically bald guys with piercings. So yeah, LA nightclub bouncers. Uhura can speak their language, which is fortunate since that's about the only thing she gets to do in the middle of the film. Now, since so much of this film is obsessed with taking a few elements from Wrath of Khan and twisting them slightly, let's talk about the times that this just doesn't work. In a clever twist, it's Kirk who saves the ship, but will soon die because of radiation exposure. And then this famous moment becomes this. Oh well. Maybe it just would have been better if they just remade Wrath of Khan and cast Tilda Swinton as Khan Noonien Singh. This is a movie that looks very expensive. From the sets to the effects, the money's been spent on screen, but nowhere more so than the costume budget. It kind of feels like there's a new costume in every scene. For some reason, everybody in Starfleet, an organization not previously known for its love of hats, now has everybody wearing hats like it's a police academy movie. The first two films have this in common. The scripts think they are cleverer than they are. The first film's energy helps you overlook the leaps and logic somewhat. But in this film, that energy just seems to be in service of setting up action set pieces with some often spurious logic to get there. Khan, Scotty, Scotty, Khan. I mean, this is just gibberish. Khan, Scotty, Scotty, Khan doesn't even appear in this film. 
For me, the first few viewings of this film resulted in the following emotions. The first time I saw Into Darkness, I was exhilarated, but also disappointed by the ham-fisted handling of elements from Wrath of Khan. The second time I saw the film, I was angry at the ham-fisted handling of the elements from Wrath of Khan. The third viewing had me making peace with the ham-fisted handling of elements from Wrath of Khan. Any feelings I have about this film after that are a bonus, but now I want a ham sandwich the size of your fist. So apart from the bits they tried to twist from Wrath of Khan, Into Darkness was an okay sci-fi adventure film. It's just that those clever twisty bits from Wrath of Khan really detract from the enjoyment of the film for anyone who's seen the original Star Trek 2. It's like remaking Casablanca and having Ilsa stay behind with Claude Rains, or The Godfather where Fredo becomes the Don. Yes, it's different, but it also completely misses the point. Like 2009's Star Trek, Abrams 2015 film Star Wars The Force Awakens was considered a fun if fairly safe jumpstart of a dormant franchise. 2013's Star Trek Into Darkness was, like 2019's The Rise of Skywalker, a film with a breakneck pace that makes little sense most of the time and totally flushes down the toilet any residual goodwill on the part of the audience. Based on this film, film scientists have postulated a theory called The Math of Khan, which looks into working out why J.J. Abrams does such a terrible job on any second film in the same franchise. Uneventful. The stench of JJ's second film syndrome lingers longer than when somebody uses the work microwave to reheat pickled fish. I know it was you, Richard. You know how I know? Because there's only two of us not on Keto. Here, there's a decent film intertwined with a bad remake. It's like two randy snakes copulating with one of the snakes having a bad memory. Like the snake in the movie, 51st Snakes. Star Trek Into Darkness was still a very successful film and to date is still the top grossing Star Trek film internationally. But for whatever reason, Paramount had wanted the third film to be, oh, I don't know, cheaper. If you enjoyed this film, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below, or check out some of our other videos.